Hey everybody, it's Charles from HumbleMechanic.com and today we are going to be installing ARP cylinder head studs. Next up on the White Wookiee, we are going to be installing the ARP cylinder head stud kit. These studs replace the factory bolts that hold the cylinder head down. And there's a couple of reasons why we want to replace this. First and foremost, because we have a boost application, we are going to have increased cylinder pressure. So we want a better quality bolt or stud in this case. Also, if we ever run into an issue and the cylinder head has to come off, these studs do not have to be replaced. Whereas if we went with the factory bolts, because they are torqued to yield, they need to be replaced. Torque to yield simply means that we tighten them down and then we add an extra amount of twist to the bolt, which stretches the bolt. And this means they can only be used one time. And ARP is pretty much the name in replacement hardware for any engine build. As you might imagine, the first step is going to be cleaning. We want to make sure that the threads in the block are perfect. So we're gonna start out by blowing them all out with compressed air. Then we're gonna run a thread chaser or tap down each one of these holes and make sure that the threads are in great condition. Between each run of your thread chaser or your tap, you're gonna wanna take some brake clean, spray out the hole with brake clean, and then blow it with compressed air to get any dirt, any debris out of these holes. Repeat with each hole until a bolt, or in this case the stud, runs in and out by hand with no issues and does not hang up at all. If you run into one of these bolt holes that does have a problem and can't be tapped, you're going to want to take the proper steps to get it fixed. In a case like this, it may be worth taking to the machine shop to have it done properly. I don't really love a helicoil in this application. If done properly, it should be fine. You can also look for something like a time cert to see if they make one for your application. Continuing on the cleaning process, we want to clean all the new hardware. These are pretty easy. Simply cleaning it with soap and water is just fine and then blowing everything dry. This is an area you want to do a thorough inspection. We want to find a problem now, not when we have a catastrophic failure of the engine. Next, it's time to install the studs. Before they go in the holes, we want to make sure we use the ARP assembly lube and lubricate the threads of each one. The instructions for the ARP studs say to install them hand tight. I have actually heard of cases of them backing out a little bit. So I give them a little tiny just nudge with a ratchet to make sure that they're snug. Plus it can be challenging to get a good grip on the stud. So, so just a touch with a wrench to make sure that they're snug. In the case of the VR6, there's three different length studs. So make sure you're installing them in the proper location. Did I say make sure you're installing them in the proper location? Make sure you're installing them in the proper location. It only took me two or three times to make sure that they were installed in the right location. Charles, you're doing it wrong. Charles, you're doing it wrong. Charles, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. Doing it wrong. Next, we're going to install the head gasket and cylinder head. In this case, because we are doing a boost application, I split the head gasket and used a head gasket spacer. I also use the copper head gasket spray for this application. Normally, that's not something I would do, but because I took extra measures and I'm using the spacer, I went ahead and used the spray. When installing the cylinder head gasket or the spacer or the head, Make sure you install them gently, set them down in their location. Do not drop the cylinder head onto the gasket. And of course, if there's any guide dowels or guide pins, make sure they're installed in their proper location. Next, we need to lubricate the washers and the threads for the studs. The point where the washers make contact is actually the highest friction point, so you wanna make sure you lubricate that with the ARP assembly lube. Make sure you put enough to cover the entire surface. We're gonna put all the washers on and all the nuts on hand tight. Now this stuff can get a little messy. It works much better if you have a small brush to apply it. Now, I like to snug them down before I break the torque wrench out. This gets them just beyond hand tight. You do really wanna follow the OEM torque sequence even when you're just snugging them up. Next, it's time to get out the torque wrench and start torquing. Again, follow the OEM recommended torque sequence for the cylinder head in this case, and in most cases, we're working from the inside out. When it comes to the amount of torque applied, we wanna follow the ARP numbers. In this case, it is three stages totaling 80 pound-feet of torque, which means we're doing all the bolts to 27, 
then we're doing all the bolts to 54, and then we're finishing up doing all the bolts to total 80 pound-feet of torque. And as you wrap that up, consider wiping off any excess of the ARP lubricant. And to finish up, you can set your torque wrench to 80 pound-feet of torque and do one final torque sequence just to make sure that you got them all. There's kind of a weird pattern here to this VR6, so we want to be thorough and make sure that we didn't leave one of them loose or not fully torque them. All right guys, that's it. This may seem a little bit like an intimidating job, but it's pretty easy and there's a lot of instructions out there which makes it even easier. You simply follow the instructions of ARP and the manufacturer as well. So I'm gonna wrap it up there. Questions, comments, you know what to do. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. Don't forget to subscribe right here on YouTube and ding that notification bell or over on the blog at humblemechanic.com. If you want exclusive content and discounts to places like Black Forest Industries, MT Knives, Sonic Tools, Eastwood, Kerma TDI, S&P Automotive, Eurowise, and more, check out the crew membership program. You also get exclusive videos as well as access to the training manuals that I build for my VW Audi training classes. You can also support the show on Patreon as well as using my Amazon affiliate link. There's a link to Amazon down in the description as well as to all the items that I used for this video. If you're into social media, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course Snapchat. You can also check out the playlist for other GTI related videos. Guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.